Hey everybody! It's time for Facebook Live, Tuesday's Facebook Live. Hopefully you guys can find me. If you're watching in the replay, thank you too. I love anybody who watches the video, whether you watch it in the replay or you watch it live. I will say that Facebook has been kind of weird lately. They're, I'm hearing that they are not sending out notifications. Um, several of you um, have messaged me and said, I'm not getting notified when you go live. And I am finding it on my end as well, some of the lives that I have been following, um, same thing, I am not getting notifications. So I apologize, I wish there was a way that I knew how to um, fix that, but I do not, I think that's a Facebook thing. Okay, if you'll just bear with me while I try to send this over to my group page. Hi everybody, I'm so glad you're joining. Um, I am trying to get this out of the way and then I can focus on what we're supposed to do. We always have to do these little technology things. Thanks for joining me. Hi, everybody. Okay, so um, it looks a little glitchy on my end. You guys look a little glitchy on your end. I disconnected from the Wi-Fi. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. Okay, hi, Gina. All right, so did you see my little sneak peek photo on um, Facebook a little while ago? I just finished um, my second class to go for March and it's the Geared Up Garage class and I'm so excited about it. Um, I have typed, photographed, everything's done. I even filmed a video to go with this class too. You guys, um, I, I hear you. I, many of you said you prefer these videos, um, helps with some of these techniques and things. So as it warrants in the future, as I'm doing my classes and my PDFs, I will be adding in videos where we feel like um, we need them. And this one for sure, I felt like there's one uh, technique in particular where we're making faux metal for these gears. So I just knew that we needed a video. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. It's gonna take me a couple more days to finish listing it and getting it all in the right place. Ah. Can you see all of the good, fun stuff? Um, I am thinking I will have it officially listed by Thursday. Let's see, which one can I show you? How about a Father's Day slash dude birthday box? I don't know if you can see those gears. They're so cool. That's included. Um, it takes me a, a day or two to make sure everything is finalized. Here's the faux metal. I don't know if you can see that. But it's um, a really, really good class. It's gonna have seven projects. Um, they, you're gonna get embellishments, ribbon, paper, and celebration items, of course. March is our last celebration month, so of course I'm gonna include that opportunity for you. Um, so hopefully, I'll have it listed. Probably, I'm gonna aim towards Thursday. Tomorrow I'm gonna be out of the office most of the day. I've got some appointments. A little, so um, tomorrow probably won't get done, but Thursday be looking for that, okay? Um, so some of you say it's freezing up, I'm sorry. Um, all I can say is that when I upload it, um, when I'm done, it'll be nice and clear from beginning to end, okay? Sorry about that, you guys. I can't help the solar flares, as I call them, uh, the solar flares that cause internet issues. Okay, um, this week my focus is, and I know this is gonna be backwards, celebration coordination. Let's see, I'm gonna get real close, can you see? Celebration coordination are six new products coming out on Friday. They're not, they're not available yet, I'm gonna show you them, but you can't get them till Friday. They are things that coordinate with your celebration stamp sets that you've already gotten. Um, you know, we've had a wonderful selection of stamp sets already that we get free with either a 50 or $100 purchase. These are to enhance those for you, to add more value to your stamp sets, um, kind of help you get um, more bang for your buck, you know, it goes further, more bang for your free, actually, because those stamp sets didn't cost you anything. Um, it's gonna help you do more with them. Um, so here is the PDF. Did I link this? I think I linked it. Over at pinkbuckroot.com, my post went up. I think I did link this flyer. Here's the flyer, there are six things, okay? The stamp set. Why am I showing you a flyer? I have them right here. 
There's a stamp set, four sets of framelits, and a punch. Let me go through them, okay? The first one I'm gonna show you are the Lily, and I need to look at the name. Lily, oh, well, this one's Lily Framelits. <laughs> it's not too confusing, okay? These go with this gorgeous lasting Lily stamp set. This is the one of the level twos, the $100 value, okay? Lasting Lilies, um, it's gonna cut out the flowers, the stems, the leaves, but look at these guys. I love these. These are little uh, little label, you know, um, tags, whatever. I, I always love when we get new shapes of those. Okay, so there's number one option. And these um, are not free. They are to go with your free items. So when you order these, you can even earn more free things. So if you get two, two framelit sets, you will have earned yourself another celebration item, okay? Um, these are $27. Lasting Lily. Here, I have only used this stamp set one time. I don't know why, I really need to play with it, but that's what it looks like. And now that I have the framelits, I could have stamped those and popped them up, which, you know, we get to use the dimensional, which is my favorite, okay? All right, now this is probably my favorite, and these are called Call Me Cupcake. So it goes with Hello Cupcake, which we did on a Facebook um, week, product of the week, Facebook Friday, a couple of weeks ago. But I want you to notice this thing right here. There's a cake stand and this little thing, the glass thing. I know there's a fancy name for it, glass thing that goes over. Um, so you won't have to fussy cut your cupcake. We did this a couple of weeks ago. You can use the framelit. Oh, we love that. Same with this one. It also has a framelit for that cute little heart pick. Wait, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was questioning myself suddenly. Yeah, it's there, okay? Um, it's got candles you can add, little, you know, picks. We're gonna use these on Friday. Um, but this thing, did I pull out? Okay, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek, okay? If you join my stamp group, my Pink buck, that's it, Sylvia. I don't know how to how to pronounce that. Cake dome, that's an easier way to say it. Cake dome. Uh, Catherine, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna have to look that up. If you're a member of my Pink Buckaroo Stampers group, um, that's my Facebook group for anybody interested in stamping up, everybody's welcome. I'm gonna do three more projects on Friday. And here's one, a little sneak peek. There's that, we're gonna call it the cake dome. Okay, look at it, it's very cute. Okay, that's all you get, it's a sneak peek, and it's, Really cute. So that's what we're gonna do on Friday. We're gonna use that set on Friday. Um, yeah, you guys <laughs> have to look that word up. I don't know it all. I don't know everything. I know my kids think that maybe I do know everything, but cloche, a cloche, cloche. Clo uh, all right, you guys, moving on. <laughs> the next one is hop around framelits. Can you tell which one these go with? This right here, this so happy together he was the star of facebook friday a couple of weeks ago too oh i like that kathy i'm not fancy so i call it a dome i'm right there with you i'm gonna call it a dome um remember when we made this card and we fussy cut and i told you you need to fussy cut it and you were like yeah right i'm fussy cutting that look now you don't have to framelits to match and here's the other one we did that guy the framelit for him Another thing that's added in here is the lily pad and the little flowers. And look, even a framelit for the little flies. Okay, that, I wouldn't even attempt to fussy cut those. That, that's the only way you could cut those out. So, on Friday, we're using this too. We're using this cute lily pad, okay? Like crochet with a cl cloche, cloche. Thank you, Louise, that's good. That's a good explanation, cloche. Okay, I'm probably gonna still stick with dumb because I probably won't remember that, but that's really funny. Amy, thank you for sharing the video. I do appreciate that. I have a prize for you guys this week. I'll tell you about it in a second. Okay, so then the fourth framelit set is what we're using today. It goes with a painted season. Remember the painted season stuff that I showed you? It was my favorite of the second release, the celebration stuff. I fussy cut all those flowers. Well, now we don't have to fussy cut. It's got flat the flowers, the pine cone framelit is in there. There's the pine cone that we did. Um, this one, well, I'll hold that one because that one kind of goes with the next one. Um, and then remember these that were so cute. You don't you don't have to fussy cut. Framelits. Yay, okay, so 
This is called Four Seasons. I like the name of that one. I don't know why they didn't come up with fancy names for the other one. So Four Seasons Framelits, which coordinate with the Colorful Seasons stamps slash paper bundle. Um, okay, now, those are the four framelits. There's a stamp set designed to coordinate with all of these stamp sets too. And it's a really good one. How many are in here? 17, 17 um, sentiments in here. That's quite a bit. We're gonna use them on all three projects on Friday. Um, it's, it's a really, really good set to kind of, um, you know, go hand in hand with your other sets. This is one card that I did and it has that birthday wishes, which is we're gonna use on one of those projects. Well, I've already showed you. Um, but also here, this, here's that, look, I cut that out with that Four Seasons bundle or Four Seasons framelit. I mean, guys, there's a ton of use for all of this. The sixth thing, which is probably my prediction, the most popular is a new punch. Look at that, it's called the Story Label Punch. And it's a good one. It's pretty big. I think it's a pretty big sized punch. I mean, it's no bigger than our, you know, big circle punch, but it, the shape, the size, I feel like that's something we usually get a framelit for. So I love it when it's a punch. You guys, right? We like when we can just grab the punch, punch it. I know. I hear you. I'm the same way. Okay, so six items, brand new on Friday. They are not free but you earn free celebration items when you order them. Order two sets of these framelits and you've earned a celebration item. Uh, the stamp set is 17, it is photopolymer, and the punch is 18. So pick out a couple of these and add on one of our new celebration items or maybe you don't have the frogs or you don't have the cupcake yet, you can add that in for free. Um, hello, if it's free, it's for me, right? Is Belinda on here? She's the one that coined that saying. So free, we like free, and we like things that make our free items go even further. Remember, it is celebration. We have a new brochure with new items, and I've talked to you guys at length about these three new items. Here's what we're using today, the Painted Seasons Bundle. It is free with a $100 purchase. It has the stamps and the gorgeous designer series paper. And then we've got um, two other stamp sets, okay? All right. Let's see, what else did I wanna tell you? I've moved through my pile of stuff here. Um, prize, how about a prize? Today, I'm gonna to give one person who shares this video on Facebook, I'm gonna give you two celebration stamp sets, By the Bay and Home to Roost. Okay, so two, one person's gonna win two prizes. So all you have to do is share the video and I will pick a winner on Friday. So make sure you join me over on my um, Stampin' Up, no, my Pink Buckaroo Stampers group. It's different than this page, it's a group. And just click join, everybody is welcome. Um, there's no um, requirement for you to join. It's just an easier way to find me and find things that I post um, rather than this page. I know, it's a little confusing. I will add the link when I'm done here on Facebook up in the video description. Okay, so today we are making this cute tiny little wreath. Isn't it so cute and springy? Are you guys ready for spring? I know, you know, here in South Texas, we don't have a lot of cold weather. I always say that, but it has been dreary. It has been yucky and foggy and yucky. So I'm ready for those bluebird days, you know, with the blue sky and the flowers and the butterflies. So this is what we're gonna make today, okay? All right, I'm gonna take just a second. I'm gonna switch you over, so close your eyes. If you get motion sickness, I don't wanna get you all crazy because I want you to see what we're doing. I tried to think, I had two ideas for today's project. I was trying to think of something a little different and I went to Joanne Fabrics on Saturday. Do you guys have a Joanne Fabrics? Um, they have a great selection of fabric and that's why I went. My mom is actually making me some little, oh, you know what, I'm not even gonna say it because this is a surprise for some people on my team. I almost gave the surprise away. But anyways, I went to Joanne Fabrics for fabric and I was just kind of wandering around and I thought, you know, what about a wreath? So that's what I did. And I don't know if I've ever seen these little grapevine wreaths. They are, it says, here's the tag, because I know you guys always ask, so I didn't cut it off. Eight inch grapevine wreath. 
okay? And you could even use, have you guys seen people using embroidery hoops? Um, just an embroidery hoop and they're turning it into like a little wreath and hanging them on the walls and stuff. So I thought maybe even an embroidery wreath would have been really cute with this. But here is what I got, eight inch from Joanne Fabrics. Pretty standard, I think you could find something similar wherever you get your fabric or even I think Walmart carries these kinds of things. Now you'll also notice we're gonna use that beautiful butterfly thinlet that I focused on a few weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Um, I just can't stop using it, it's so beautiful. And it's a spring wreath, so of course we need butterflies. Now my color combination, let me get everything situated so I can see your comments. Boy, my video keeps freezing up. I sure hope your video isn't doing that. And if it is, I apologize. Come back for the replay. Okay. Here we go. This is our color combination. Calypso Coral, Grapefruit Grove, So Saffron, Flirty Flamingo. Very springy, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> Mary, I hope those wreaths don't sell out. They actually had about 10, and I picked through all of them to find the perfect ones. Do you guys do that? I know. They were all a little bit off a little off kilter and I was trying to find some that worked. Um, now, how did I come up with my color combination? I, you guys asked me that a lot. Um, I go on Pinterest and I type in spring color combination <laughs> or Halloween color combination or whatever it is I'm working on. You really should do that. There's so many things, so many resources out there that'll help you choose your colors. And then I kind of look through the colors that I have and see which ones are the best. And that's what I came up with, all right? Oh, there's my mom. I see, hello, mom. Hello, art three. My mom is an art teacher, in case I, you guys haven't heard me say that before. All right, well, let's get started. So we're going to use this framelit right here, the flower, and we're gonna use these two little, uh, I don't know, twig, leaf framelits. We're gonna use those. We're also using Colorful Seasons, not to be confused with the Four Seasons framelit. This is in the annual catalog, and I was looking for something, some kind of words that would just be general and something kind of big. So I'm going with this one that I have used so many times, Just Breathe. I think that's a great sentiment, um, especially for a fun little project like this. All right, now what we're gonna need is to stamp You'll notice I have quite a few flowers here. And don't worry, don't go away. I'm not gonna cut all eight of them. I've done some prep work ahead of time. You're gonna need cardstock in all of those colors that I showed you. Um, Grapefruit Grove, Calypso Coral, So Saffron, and Flirty Flamingo. Now I've done all those ahead of time and we'll pull those out in a minute. Um, this stamp is one of those that Stampin' Up! calls dynamic is that the name, dynamic textured? Basically, it's very detailed, but the stamp seems flat. It's really kind of magic. Um, and sometimes if your pad has too much ink or not enough ink, you're not gonna get a clear image. So you might have to play around with that. One way to remove ink from your pad, and I learned this from my good friend, Ange, is to take your bone folder and just scrape a little bit like that. Scrape a place on your pad if it's a little bit juicy and with your bone folder. My bone folder always has ink on it because I <laughs> do this a lot. I re-ink my pad using my bone folder. I know it's bad. Now, I'm noticing, do you guys recognize this gold right here from last week? Yes, I haven't even taken a moment to clean it. All right, so we're gonna stamp it. You wanna stamp it in the color um, that you're using with the same color ink. So tone on tone, this is Grapefruit Grove ink on Grapefruit Grove cardstock. Um, you're gonna do it twice, twice for each color. And you definitely need to clean your stamp in between using your chamois. We all love our chamois. And then for every flower, so we're making eight flowers, you're gonna also cut or stamp the flower in soft suede on crumb cake cardstock. Now don't worry, I have already typed all this up. It's on my blog post right now. You'll find it over at pinkbuckaroo.com. I will put the direct link up in the video description when we're done. So you guys don't feel like you have to write it down on some little tiny post-it note that you're gonna lose. I have it all typed up over there for you. 
All right, so now notice that this framelit is gonna need to be rotated to find the right spot. That means the, the flower is not symmetrical. It, doesn't, it means you can't just lay this on here and it's gonna fit anywhere. So you need to just rotate it. And this one's not hard to find because of this petal right here. See how it has that like straight edge? Instead of, actually, we don't even need to do the crumb cake one. What am I doing? Do the grapefruit grove one. We're gonna do something else to that one. All right, now my magnet seems to be wanting to jump. If it does that, what do I always tell you guys? Move your paper. Wherever that magnet wants to jump, just move the paper to where the magnet wants to go. It's easier than trying to fight that magnet. Yes, Louise, I have used a plastic spoon so much that I have broken them. <laughs> I use those too, but my bone folder is always here and it doesn't break as easily as the spoon. But you're right, a spoon will keep, if you use the back of a spoon um, to re-ink your pad, it will keep your bone folder nice and clean. All right, so you've, you've cut out all your flowers with your framelit. Now you are going to take your scissors. There's no framelit for this. You're gonna cut out the center of this flower just around the outside. And you know what, it doesn't matter. One, time, one of them I cut kind of skinny, it still looked fine. So just around, and it looks like a little iris. <laughs> looks like someone's eye. It's very strange, but once you put it on your flower, it gives your flower much more life, doesn't it? Don't you think it looks better? All right, so you're gonna do two of each. We've got Calypso Coral, we've got Grapefruit Grove, So Saffron, and Flirty Flamingo. So you've got eight of those done. Now I have also cut out a few just blank ones. Um, it doesn't matter what colors, you just need a few. We're gonna add these on the back of the wreath to kind of give it some more um, depth and width on the wreath. All right, so you know what, before we do that, do that, let's also do the stamping because once we start gluing, we don't wanna have to stop. I have cut out those leaves. Remember we talked about that leaf framelit? I've cut out about eight of those, which is probably more than you need, um, out of uh, soft sea foam, that beautiful, beautiful green color, that very light green. Now, a few weeks ago, we spent a lot of time with these butterflies, and I showed you how you can just cut them apart. You don't need the whole butterfly strip, the cluster. Um, right now, we're just gonna use this one that's kind of landing. You can see it from the side. And I would prefer to use my multi-purpose adhesive sheets, but you actually have to remember to put your paper on the adhesive before you cut it, which I didn't do. So here we are with my best friend, ha ha, the fine tip glue pen. The fine tip glue pen and I have been spending quite a bit of time together lately and we're working it out. <laughs> we struggle, the fine tip glue pen and I. Okay, so you're gonna put that there and then put something on top of it like an ink pad or a clear block. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Oh, something I didn't even prepare. Let me grab, we need a strip of Whisper White. And we're going to punch what two ends actually with, and I know I pulled it out, here it is, the tailored tag punch, all right? So punch two ends, let me see how big this needs to be. About, what does that look like? About five and a half, five inches? There we go. And then here's that fun Just Breathe stamp set. My butterfly is getting ready to fly away and I won't be able to find him. I'm gonna stamp this in Calypso Coral. You could do any of these colors that you want. I'm gonna do it a little bit towards the right side because, well that wasn't very good. Let's try that again. I'm gonna stamp it on the right side so that there we go. I have room for that butterfly over here. That may be a little bit too much room, but we'll go with it. Okay, I think we're ready now. We've got all of our pieces in place, and I'm gonna use my hot glue gun because when I am making a wreath, I know that a hot glue gun is really the best way to go. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of dimension to these, just kind of rolling those edges like that, kind of pushing them up 
Let's see, I wanna make sure you guys can see. And then I'm just gonna start going in a row like this. And I'm going to kind of, well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the colors, mix them up a little bit, but keep in order. Does that make sense? I'm gonna make sure that they are not, you know, that two colors aren't clumped up together. All right, so push that into your grapevine wreath and a little grapefruit grove, a little hot glue. And I'm gonna turn them each time too. I don't want them to all look exactly the same. And let's see, now I'm gonna start over with Flirty Flamingo. Hello everybody who's joining. Yes, it screams spring. I think we're all there. I think we're all over the dreary, glummy winter. Although I do feel guilty when I say that because I know mine is not as gloomy and dreary as the rest of you. But boy, it sure is nice when it comes, isn't it? Everything changes color outside. All right, let's see. Stick that on and I think I'll do this one here. And mm -hmm, trying to decide. And you could go all the way around if you wanted to. You would probably need 16 flowers to go all the way around. All right, now I told you I had a few of these that I just cut out plain. And I'm gonna just kind of bend them up to give them a little bit of texture and loosen them up a little bit. And I'm gonna put them down here behind. See how I'm doing that on the back? Just a little bit. And you could do it all the way up, all the way around, but I think, whoops, I just put that on the wrong side, but we will make it work. There we go. I am gonna put that banner down here at the bottom, so I probably don't really need them necessarily at the bottom. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, let's add in a few of these and just a tiny bit of glue, and we're gonna just poke them in between the flowers, like that. Now, in order to get your celebration item, maybe you haven't gotten the painted season and you need to get up to $100. Well, if you haven't got your spring colors yet, I would recommend adding on these four ink pads along with the coordinating the same color card stock because you'll get so much use out of these colors, especially in the coming months and in the summer. These are bright summery colors too. Um, and that colorful season where this came from, Just Breathe, is a stamp set that has a coordinating framelit. It's the one that I use all the time, that scalloped border. I think that one is a must have if you don't have it yet. It is a good one. There we go, okay, so that looks pretty good. Now let's see, one thing, and you know what, I'm gonna dry this ink. It's probably dry, but what I'm gonna do in a minute to it will make this ink smear if it's not all the way dry. So I'm gonna hit it for a second with your heat tool. And if you have any little, um, you know, your hot glue gun spider webs, you can take your heat tool and it'll blow them away. All right, now back to my bone folder. Hopefully it's clean. I'm gonna just take this paper and kind of curl it. See how that works? You can make those go backwards or forwards like that. All right, all right, where do we want it? Right about, no, it needs to go, let's see, a little bit further down, right there. I was thinking you could also put a welcome, um, cute little welcome sentiment on here. This would be a great little wreath if you have an office, maybe an office door or hanging on your filing cabinet. Wouldn't that be so cute? I bet it would get lots of compliments, especially from those who are waiting for spring like the rest of us. Okay, now our butterfly cannot just be white. It needs to be 
sparkly white. So take your wink of Stella and go along and fill him in with some sparkle. It will also cover up any of that fine tip glue that you may or may not have smeared. Not that I would know, ha ha. Okay, now let's put him right there. And you know, hot glue is gonna keep this in place, especially if you put it in a place that is gonna get a lot of um, traffic and it's really gonna hold together. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? All right, the last thing we need is the ribbon. And I like lots of ribbon and big bows. So I pulled out three, um, three ribbons that coordinate with these colors. Okay, this is the, let me read it to you so I don't tell you the wrong thing, Calypso Coral Satin Ribbon. It is three eighths of an inch and it is in the occasions catalog. Then we have the Grapefruit Grove quarter inch. And then this is the Celebration Organdy Grapefruit Grove Ribbon. That is unorderable right now, but it's coming and you're definitely gonna want it because there's five colors in that pack. Okay, so I'm gonna get them all together and I'm gonna pretend like I'm just tying a bow with one thing, okay? Just treat them like they're all one piece. And tie your bow, leaving long dangly legs here because it needs the wreath needs lots of dangling ribbon. And then you wanna cut them all at an angle right there let's do these see how i left them all on the bolt instead of trying to guess what kind of what size and how much i needed i left them all on the bolt and then just cut it off as i got it and then i think i put it over here yes that's perfect and yes we do need a little bit more of that hot glue right there all right what do you guys think easy peasy I think and perfect for spring for your office maybe hanging on your refrigerator I wouldn't put it outside it's paper it might get wet but inside will you know really give you that breath of spring air that you probably need all right so now remember you guys there's gonna, we're gonna do three more projects on Friday over on my group. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna add that link. You can click it and join. Everybody is welcome to join my group. You wanna also remember that these celebration coordination items that I talked to you about at the beginning will be available on Friday. They're not available today, so don't go looking for them. They're available for, on Friday, and they're really gonna help you get more out of your celebration stamp sets that you've already gotten for free, plus you're gonna earn more free celebration items. Um, and remember too, you guys, if, there, if your list is really long, really, really long, the best deal is that starter kit. You can actually, if you purchase the starter kit today, you could add these things in today because demonstrators can order them in February. So if you really want these and you don't want to wait, you can add these into a starter kit. The starter kit is either $99 or $129. And either way, you're going to get $75 in free product. If you choose that second option, you're going to get that gorgeous bag for free. All right. Okay. I think that's it for today, you guys. I am really um, happy that you joined me. Please let me know if you have any questions. Hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com and get the details. The, um, there's a whole list at the bottom of all the products that I use and it'll take you right over to the store. All right, you guys, I will see you on Friday for Facebook Friday at two o'clock central. Thanks everybody, have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. <music>